So this video is going to help you to work out a Thevenin equivalent circuits. It's a way of finding a simpler circuit by removing the load and finding the equivalent. And the two circuits you see on the screen at the moment are the same circuit, but we've just made them look different. It might come in handy later on. Step one is to find the total voltage with the load removed. Step two is to find the total current under no load conditions where basically these two impedances are in series. Step three is to find the Thevenin voltage. We can use the current to find either of these voltage drops and then add or subtract them to one of the voltages to find the Thevenin voltage. Step four is to find the Thevenin resistance or impedance from a loads perspective, which would be in parallel here. And then step five, make the equivalent circuit and then replace the load, step six, and do all the calculations to check that they're equivalent and they should be if you've done it right. So here's a typical AC Thevenin uh, question that you might get. We've got two voltage sources. We've got ZA on the left and ZB on the right. We've got 230 sine. Is, that's the amplitude, 230 volts a sine wave for V1 and V2 is a sine wave that's leading by 90 degrees called a cos wave. And then we've got a load in the middle. So there are the, um, on the argon diagram, we can draw the voltages and step one was to find the total voltage, which is uh, the phase of sum of the two. So V1 plus negative V2, because it's going in the opposite direction, equals the total voltage. And then we can visualize these voltages because they're both 230 volts. So um, using Pythagoras, we can find that the total voltage is 325 volts roughly, and that the phase difference of this circuit is 45 degrees using arc tan or tan to the minus one for opposite over adjacent. Now for the total series impedance, because there's no load there, we just add the two impedances together, which gives us positive 341 J ohms. So that, because it's a positive J, that is inductive. But we still don't know which way the currents flow in. So to find the series current, we do Ohm's law. Current is total voltage over total impedance, and we've already worked out ZT. So the series current is basically in polar 325 volts, roughly, divided by the total impedance of 341J. And that comes out as just shy of an amp, 0 0.953 amps at minus 135 degrees with respect to V1. So it is negative with respect to V1 and VT. It's flowing anti-clockwise, whereas their voltages are pushing clockwise. So there's V1 and VT. Because they're both V1 and V2 are both 230 volts, so there's a 45 degrees there. Then there's a 90 degree lag of the current in addition, which gives us 135 degrees from V1's perspective. And you can see as V1 goes up, the current goes down. So they are correct on the diagram. So to find the Thevenin voltage, we've got an anti-clockwise current. So this voltage drop is actually going to make uh, an addition. It's going to be bigger than V1. So the Thevenin voltage is V1 take away the negative voltage drop across ZA. So that's V1 minus ZI, which is another voltage. So that comes out as 353 roughly volts in polar form is the Thevenin equivalent voltage. So find the total impedance now from a load's perspective. So if the load was there, he would see those two as in parallel. So we do product over sum, which is the easiest way. ZA times ZB over ZA plus ZB comes out as 233 ohms or minus 233J. So from a Lowe's perspective, 
the overall impedance is capacitive. So now we've got everything that we need. The current through the load is the Thevenin voltage divided by the total impedance in the circuit. For some questions give you a bit of a curveball. So our load is 100 ohms at 0.9 power factor. And because there's a power factor, we know there's a reactive component and it's positive 0.9, so we know it's inductive. Power factor is true power compared to apparent, which is adjacent compared to hypotenuse, which is what cosine is. So 0.9 is the cosine of our phase angle for this impedance. So if we do arc cos or cos to the minus one of 0.9, we can work out the angle in between the adjacent resistive component and the overall impedance is 25.842 degrees. So now to resolve into real and imaginary, we could use um, Pythagoras, but 100 ohms times the cosine of the angle plus 100 times the sine gives us our real and imaginary parts. We knew the real would be 90 ohms if Z was 100 and the power factor was 0 0.9. So 100 sine theta gives us 43.589 J ohms. So there's a rectangular and polar forms of our load. Now we can stick that into the equation and find the current through the load and the voltage across it. So the current through the load is a Thevenin voltage divided by the total impedance. Now we know what Z load is. It's whacking it into a calculator. And we can find out that the load in polar form, the current is 1.6 865 amps at 47 degrees leading compared to the Thevenin voltage. V equals IR, but basically V equals I times Z in this case. So it's the current through it times its impedance. So that is 169 volts, roughly, the load voltage. Now to turn this into a proper circuit and test it, we've got the equations are 230 sine 100 pi t and 230 cos 100 pi t. Now if you've seen my video on understanding omega angular velocity, whatever's in front of the t is equal to omega or 2 pi f. So that tells us that the frequency of this circuit is 50 hertz and everybody hurts sometimes. But what it gives us, it unlocks us to be able to find out what the component values are. So you know that XC, capacitive reactance, is 1 over 2 pi FC, and XL is 2 pi FL. But if we know the reactance of our components, we can find the capacitance and the inductance. So C is 1 over 2 pi F XC, and L is XL over 2 pi F by transposition. So ZA, which is minus 159J, because it's negative, it's definitely a capacitor, and it comes out as roughly 20 microfarads. Then, to get that inductive reactance of the opposite side from earlier, 43.59J, that was a 0.1388 Henry. And you just keep doing this for all of the reactive components to find out what value to put in the circuit to simulate. And I use multi-sim, and you can see on the left the original circuit, and on the right the Thevenin equivalent gives us exactly the same values. Just make sure you have used lots of decimal places for your components, so it's nice and accurate. So you've got peak and RMS. And on the next page, just a, a summary of some of the uh, calculations. But thanks so much for uh, watching, and please comment and let me know anything you'd like to know. 
And by the way, it doesn't matter which load you remove and where you start from, you'll get the same answers. Cheers for now.